A couple of weeks ago, I sold my Nikon Z6, a beautiful full frame mirrorless camera. And to replace it, I bought this, the Nikon D780, a full frame DSLR instead. So why did I make this decision? And what does the F3 have to do with it? So to start off, there's really only one true reason why I sold a Z6 to buy this camera. And it is that little spinny boy right there. So the D780 is the latest entry in Nikon's prosumer D700 series of cameras. And this one replaces the D750, which was a typical prosumer, you know, wedding photographer, working photographer kind of camera. And this camera, to be quite honest, is rather boring. It's exactly what you'd expect from a prosumer camera. It's full frame, 24 megapixels. It has a 51 point uh, auto focusing system in OVF mode. It has, the, it has a very interesting focusing system in live view mode, which I'll touch on later. But in terms of actual real tech specs, there's nothing spectacular here. You know, it's not the fastest. It's not, it doesn't have the highest burst rate. It doesn't have some amazing ultra high resolution sensor or any of that stuff. And that pretty much makes this a boring prosumer DSLR. So why did I choose to buy one? So this camera's tech specs are very boring and typical, but they're not the reason I purchased it. Instead, I bought this camera because of how well it fits into my current shooting workflow, which I think is way more important than getting the newest, shiniest, highest techest camera you can find. And that's because when it comes down to it, most good digital cameras at this price point are going to produce incredible images. Doesn't matter what system you're shooting, you know, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Nikon, it really doesn't matter anymore. They, all the camera brands can produce amazing images. So what's actually more important to me is workflow and how it fits into my current setup of camera and lenses. And that is where we get to the F3 and the F100. Now, in order to talk about workflow, we need to rewind the clock back to the end of 2019. And this is when I had multiple different camera systems for shooting film and digital. I had a Canon A1 and a bunch of lenses. I had an Olympus OM10 and two lenses. And I also had a Sony a7 III and like one or two lenses and an A6400 for vlogging and a couple of lenses. So I ended up with this sort of mishmash of all these different camera brands and different lens systems. And I was actually getting really annoyed with all of it. I was trying to use adapters to try and, you know, use the FD lenses on the Sony and they didn't work very well. And I was also trying to do things like put the OM lenses on the Sony and I was tempted to get rid of something. Basically, the whole thing was a big fat mess. So at that time, I made a conscious decision to take all of my 35 millimeter film gear and my full frame gear and just sort of collapse it into one continuous system where I could have the minimum amount of gear while still being able to shoot film and digital. From where I was standing, the only system that had full compatibility across all the different kind of eras of photography I wanted to shoot was the Nikon F. I didn't go with the Canon EOS because as far as I could tell, there was no, you know, mechanically winding EOS cameras and Canon's FD system couldn't be adapted to the EOS mount. So it was like a Minolta and Sony had about 500 different mounts and I just wasn't gonna deal with that. Also, when I had the a7 III, I really hated it. So I didn't want to deal with any of that kind of stuff. Now, obviously the Nikon F mount is hideously complicated over its time. I'll talk about that in a different video. But all of that is what led me to buy into the Nikon F system and its lenses. And also side note, the Nikon F lenses are and I was very happy with this decision. You know, I was able to shoot with the Nikon Z6. I was able to shoot on the F100. I had autofocus lenses. Everything was going swimmingly for about a year. I started getting those little gear niggles that make you want to strangle yourself. And all of them had centered around the Nikon FTZ adapter for their mirrorless cameras to mount F-mount lenses. And that is where we're coming to the little spinny boy on this mount. The main reason and only reason I switched from the Z6 to the D780 is because Nikon does not make an adapter that has an autofocus motor in the adapter so you can autofocus the screwdriver lenses. 
So what this camera brings that the Z6 couldn't is full and complete F-mount compatibility. And what that means is that this camera can use every single Nikon F lens pretty much perfectly. Now there is one exception to that and that is the pre-AI lenses. They won't actually mount on this camera because the AI coupling tab is in the way on the lens mount. But if you buy an AI conversion kit or an AI converted version of that lens, it will mount on this camera and work exactly as you'd expect it to. And that's the basic reason of this camera. And I think the best way to describe it is the way Leia the Snapchick described it is that the D780 is the lens junkies camera. This is for people who have a history of F-mount glass, but want that new technology and newer features. So what does being a lens junkie mean? Well, it means that I can take this 35 millimeter F2 AF lens, which works 100% on my F3 because it has a built-in aperture ring. I can then just take that lens off the F3, stick it on the D780, turn it on, and now I have a 35 millimeter F2 lens for my full frame digital camera. And it just works. I can then also take this lens, take it off that, put it onto the F100, turn on the F100, and take film pictures with you know, a fully electronic film camera as well. And that is what being a lens junkie means. You can take lenses that work on all three of these cameras perfectly, and pick and mix, and you can use all different lenses on different cameras. Take this beautiful lens, one of my favorite lenses, the 105 DC Nikkor F2, pop it on this camera, and it will work just fine. As long as you switch it to autofocus. And you can hear that it's focusing away perfectly. But this lens is very interesting because there's no modern replacement for this lens. Now, you, some people might be ready to type in the comments that, well, why don't you just buy the 105 f1.4e lens? If you're gonna suggest that lens over this, you need to get your head checked. Mostly because it's an E lens and E lenses don't work on any of the film cameras for a start because they can't stop down the aperture. So I'd be forced to shoot at f1.4. And also because that lens, in my opinion, isn't very good. I actually much prefer to shoot with the F2 DC version for many reasons. Now using a camera system that allows me to have this level of flexibility with shared glass across multiple different cameras and eras of photography is all well and good. But another thing that the D780 brings to the table that no other DSLR does in my opinion is the fact that this camera is a hybrid mirrorless camera and DSLR. So what the hell does that mean? Well, one special party trick of this camera is that it has the same sensor as the Nikon Z6 built in. And that means it has the same live view capabilities as a mirrorless camera. Now the reason this works is because on the sensor itself there is a phase detect array which allows it to do really good autofocus. And this enables really good video. So this camera actually has the same video capabilities as the Z6. Mostly. This camera can't output raw video as far as I'm aware, but it can do everything else. And honestly, who's using raw video on the Z6 except like proper cinematographer peoples? I'm not one of those. I don't really care about that feature anyway. So if we turn on the camera and then we press the live view button, we now have a mirrorless camera. So I can just, you know, press the record button and now I'm recording video with autofocus and face detect on a 1990s 35mm screwdriver focus lens. And that is the reason why I love the D780. And that's what makes this camera special. You know, the tech specs are not impressive on this thing. They're boring. They're the same as every other camera. But the capabilities of the camera, combined with its lens mount and the history of Nikkor glass that you can use, truly make this camera very special to someone like me who likes to shoot film and digital and likes the lenses they have and don't want and doesn't want to change from them and that is the reason why i bought a, D a nikon 
D780. And with that, I'm going to head out with this because I've got 10 frames of Delta 400 left in this F3. I need to go shoot, so see you next time.